Hey, what's happening, family? 25 minutes after the hour, you're in tune to the all-new O-City FM HD. We are the people you know, the music you love. Real Radio is back. Today, we have the distinct pleasure to speak with a very talented young brother doing his thing in a major way. Put your hands together for Mr. Shondo Blades. What up, what up, what up? How you doing, big dog? My guy, what is up? What is happening? What is the hap? So, my brother, Man. tell me what's going on down in Flexus, Long Beach, all the way to Texas. What's going on in Texas, man? <laughs> I love that, man. I'm taking over Texas. That's what's going on out here, man. You know what I mean? We're really excited about the projects we got going on. Texas is just looking real good right now, shining like the star that it is. Okay. So, how did you get into this entertainment game? Basically, I'd like you to tell the people who you are, introduce yourself to the Oklahoma family, if you will. Man, I'm Shondo Blaze, uh, a.k.a. the Outlaw General. You know what I mean? And I got into this game. It's, it's, it's a crazy way that we're actually here where we are now, but it went through professional cage fighting to acting, and then now the music is just wrapping it up in a nice, uh, a, a nice bow around the Christmas present for me. So that's what, that's what my background is. It went from cage fighting to acting, mm -hmm. uh, and then now we're doing the music thing, man. And the whole goal is to take over the state of Texas immediately. So how did you get off into cage fighting? Were you a WWE, WWF fan growing up? Nah, man. You know what? I didn't, I, I didn't even watch wrestling that much growing up. I'm really watching more of the interviews and stuff now just because I find it interesting. Mm -hmm. Then when I actually, when, when I was a kid, but I came from playing college football. Once I got to the end of that, okay. I really didn't like people being in control of the outcome of my future. You know what I mean? That's what right. it was with coaches. Sure. I played football from the time I was three years old. So where, okay, so where did you play, where did you play football? I started at quarterback. I went to a school called McMurray University in Abilene, Texas. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I loved it, man. I, like, when I do things, I become what I do. You know what I mean? It's like I, I give everything to it, studying, discipline, the whole nine yards. So that's what football was for me. And the thing about it was is that once I got to the, uh, the end of my college career and it got time to uh, move on to the next level, it's just something, something switched in me, man, as far as when it came down to listening to other people. I've always been a coachable person, but when you start to get older, you start to realize that it's more going on in people's motives than just you succeeding. You know what I mean? You got a lot mm -hmm. of different politics and all that stuff going on. So I was like, man, you know what? I want to do something where I'm in total control. And when I started looking at fighting, I had never had any previous experience fighting. So I started looking on YouTube. And sure. I would take the moves on YouTube and I would go to gyms and try it out on people. And, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. And, and, and before you know it, I'm in the cage. You know what I'm saying? And okay. I took my first fight with no coach, won the fight in a minute and 30 some seconds. And uh, guys was just like, man, this dude is for real. And it was just because I applied the same discipline that I had in football and everything else to what I did with, uh, with cage fighting. And so we come up on my, I think it was my fourth televised fight. And one of the guys that was calling the fight, his name is Boz Root. He's one of the godfathers of MMA. If anybody or any of your listeners have, you know, followed mixed martial arts. So I go down to his gym. He invites me uh, to his gym in L.A. to come out and train. I come out and train. And while I'm there, he's from uh, from Holland. So he's got a uh, an accent. You know what I mean? So he's like, uh, he's like, Shundo, man, I think you got something. I'm like, man, shh. I think I got it too. You know, so in two weeks, I was down there in L.A. Because he was telling me, he's like, man, you're your personality and everything, I think you'll do well on camera. And at that time, he had just come off a movie with uh, his name, the comedian Kevin James, who plays on King of Queens, or played sure. on Queen, King sure. of Queens. Sure, absolutely, yes. Yeah, so he, he had just done a movie with him called Here Comes the Boom, where it's basically uh, a middle school teacher, I believe it was, training to become an MMA fighter to raise money for the school. So he was in this movie with Kevin James, and he was just coming off of that. But he was just telling me, like, man, I, your personality, man, you really excel at this. So I go out to L.A., I get casted on a show in about three months uh, on ABC, which is the uh, the executive producers from The Lord of the Rings teamed up with uh, the producers of The Amazing Race, and we did a show called The Quest. Flew to Vienna, Austria uh, for 10 weeks and shot it, and it was super dope, man. And after that, I got a lot of different opportunities that came my way. 
But when I was sitting in these meetings, it just felt like the leverage just wasn't in my favor. Not only because I didn't have a lot of different uh, big projects under my belt, but because it just felt as if, you know, in Hollywood, if you don't bring your own audience with you, a lot of people that are creating this stuff feel like they're doing you a favor because they're exposing you to the audience, whether that be the ABC audience, the Disney audience, the Marvel audience. Okay. So sure. I just I felt like I needed more leverage. So okay. what I did was I backed up from the table and I said, man, I'm going to go get hot. They were like, huh? I said, I'm going to go get hot. Now, I really didn't even know what I was talking about at the time. I just knew that I needed to do something to where I could procure my own audience. And so when I left that table, it was just fixed in my mind. I need to become an artist and not only become an artist, but become an artist to where when you look at me, you already see a movie. And that's what we put together now. So when you see me, you already know and hear the music just by what you see in front of you. So that's what I went out to create. I didn't know that in the very beginning. But now that it's all coming together, man, it's one hell of a ride. Outstanding. So if you weren't doing MMA and acting, what would you be doing right now? If I wasn't doing MMA or acting? Yes. Business. I have 52 patents to my credit. Uh, they're all in the combat fitness space. And that's just, and that came along because while I was cage fighting and learning the cage fight, I started thinking of things that would have helped me along the way to get to the spot that I was in faster if I was a beginner all over again. So I created a product called the Jabber. I got a patent on that uh, and different, different other items in the combat space. So if I wasn't doing acting or I wasn't doing music, I definitely just be carrying out the business. And that's what I'm doing now by bringing it all together. But if I didn't have acting or music at all, then it would just be the business and the products that I've created. Hmm. So, very, very interesting career. The start of your career has been very, very interesting. Has yeah. everything that you thought as far as creating your own brand mm -hmm. and doing your own thing, basically creating your own seat at the table, has that been successful for you thus far? It's been the it's been the best thing ever, man. I would I would literally anybody that has a dream to bring what they want to life, I would mm -hmm. definitely say it's absolutely worth it. It's worth every sleepless night. It's worth every worry. It's worth every piece of anxiety because when it starts to catch, it's a whole different feeling when something that you burst in your brain catches through your consistency and hard work versus somebody else's idea coming to fruition. Now, everybody doesn't need to do this, but if you do have a strong passion for creating yourself, your own brand, you've had a dream of what you wanted to be ever since you can remember, I would say that it's worth the ride. Please tell me how you got the name Shondo Blades. Shondo Blades, so my name was, uh, my birth name was Rashawn, and uh, Shondo was just always a nickname. You know us, we gonna throw a nickname on. I don't care what, I don't care what <laughs> your name is or how short it is, we gonna throw a nickname on. <laughs> Right. No what. Sure. We just call you by your initials. So it's never, whatever your name is, it's not your name anymore. It's, it's that when you get in trouble. But otherwise, we're calling you 10, 11 different other names. So that's where Shondo came from. And the name Blades uh, came from the fact that everything that I've ever come up against, I cut right through it. Now, some things were harder to cut through than others. But for the most part, I've got through every different obstacle that's been placed in front of me by reframing it into an opportunity or just saying this is something I have to absolutely defeat and just got on my chill mode and destroyed it. So that's where the name Blades came from. So Shondo being a nickname for my birth name, Rashawn, and Blades being because I slice through and cut through any obstacle or competition that's put in front of me. So 10 years from now, what will Mr. Shondo Blades be into in a decade from today? I'll be the biggest action star on the face of the planet by using music as the roundabout way to get there. That's a guarantee. Outstanding. I'll be on every bit, every, I'll be on every lunchbox, on every billboard. It doesn't matter because you, the, the way, the way the entertainment business is now, the people have wised up. So a lot of the stuff that would go before, like when I was a kid, you just being this, when you play this movie role, it's not, it's not uh, sustaining anymore. That's why you're seeing a lot of these movies drop off or people just attempting to do remakes of the, the great movies that already existed because it's very hard to fool the people now because they can see you in every aspect of your life. If you only get in shape for this role 
for three months before you play it and then you play it, yeah, you may get some little kids to like it, but everybody's not going to be bought in. You know, the same way okay. they were bought into Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger and all these different people. We're not bought into people that way anymore because you know that it's, it's not a real thing. People are not living this. I live the action gladiator lifestyle. That's what I'm all about. So the people are going to be able to see that, and the music is what's going to bring them all to the party. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on live with Mr. Shondo Blades, who is a musician, actor, MMA fighter. Now let's jump off into your latest hot single. Tell me about yeah. that, man. This song out of out Texas. Of Texas. Yeah, out of Texas, man. And it's, it's one of those songs that it... Even people that aren't from Texas, when they hear it, they send me messages like, look, checking in from North Carolina, I just want to let you know, you got me feeling like I want to be from Texas. You know what I mean? And I get messages like that all day long. It's because Texas is such a powerful thing when it comes down to globally. People know Texas. I know what the – people know what the Texas flag is. They may not know other states, but Texas has always been one of those things that's run right alongside – of the United States for the simple fact that the independence that was gained and just being on your own accord and your own thing has got a whole different vibe to it here in Texas. So this song basically executes the point of what Texas is just in words coming through your speakers. So musically, who are some of the artists that you'd like to work with? I'm, now this sounds crazy. I don't really... I don't really want to work with anybody. And that's not saying that other people aren't talented, but it's like my thing is a it's a different thing. I'm not creating songs so that people will love the song. I'm creating the song so that it sets the stage for a movie that happens in your own mind that you're honestly going to be the star character of. So I don't really, I don't really think about working with other people because I'm always attempting to enhance uh, and upgrade the Shondo thing. Not saying that that's... Uh, not a possibility in the future. Just where I'm, where I am in my career now. I'm wanting to set the foundation so heavy that when it comes time to work with somebody else, whoever that may be, I've already got a super strong brand that stands alone, and all they can do is enhance what I have going. Okay. So, when you were a young man envisioning doing this. Are you doing what you thought you'd be doing when you were a shorty? The thing is, is that growing up, I always I always wanted to be in a leadership position calling my own shots. You okay. know, so my parents were both entrepreneurs. So I just, that's all I saw. I saw people creating, creating their own dollars. You know, my dad had a tire shop for 20 some odd years and it was just, you know, the ups and the downs, but I'm watching him attempt to create. How can I get more people in there? Because it was a neighborhood. Uh, type business, you know what I mean? So it was mostly sure. people in the neighborhood that would come to him. But he was always thinking of ways, how can I get more people in this place? You know what I mean? So I'm, I've always sure. watched people attempt to uh, take their brand to another level by figuring out what the consumer wants. So I've always seen myself in this position, not doing this specific thing. I'd be lying if I said that because it went from quarterback to acting to, um, excuse me, quarterback to fighting to acting. So I didn't know exactly what it was going to be, but I knew I was going to be somebody that called my own shots because that's the only way it can be with somebody like me. Well, Brother Shondo, before we get off into your latest track, Out of Texas, please tell everybody how they can contact you, uh, email, uh, phone numbers, social medias, etc. Very simple, man. On all socials, Shondo Blaze, S-H-O-N-D-O, B-L-A-D-E-S, like you're cutting somebody. And that's what you, on all socials, man. Shondo Blaze on TikTok, on X, on on Facebook, on IG, everything. That's how you can reach me. That's how you can see the new music that we're dropping. You can see the new uh, stuff that we got going on. We got a Texas stuff tour that's coming up. And we're going to be going around to different small towns in Texas. And basically just infusing kids with confidence, getting them excited, getting their confidence up getting their fighting skills up the whole nine yards. So I'm super hype about it, man. That's where you can find me, and that's where you can tap into what I'm doing. Outstanding. So please, my brother, introduce your hit single. Good people of the world, man. Open your ears and open your heart. You're listening to Out of Texas by Shondo Blaze. Remember the name, Shondo Blaze, Out of Texas. Blah! What that means? 
I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big smoking gun toting country boy from Texas. Ain't too many rhinos that wanna test me. You, you could keep the foreign cars and Rolexes. That's just the way the gang go down here in Texas. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Yeah, yeah they go them boys from out of Texas. Everything we do it big out here in Texas. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. I say it loud because we better than the rest. We mix the sauce with just a little bit of the mess. Now that's somebody that you never want to test. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Yeah, yeah. They go them boys from out of Texas. Everything we do is big out here. I'm a, I'm a big smoking gun toting country boy from Texas. Ain't too many rhinos that wanna test me. You, you could keep the foreign cars and Rolexes. That's just the way the gang go down here in Texas. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Everything we do it big out here in Texas. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Yeah, yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Yeah, they go them boys from out of Texas. Everything we do is big out here in Texas.